Oh, I should turn that around. Turn around. Okay. All right, I'm gonna wait for a few of these live people to get on and then we'll rock and roll. So this isn't like uh, super structured, um, like you might see other people do. Um, and actually I was digging through my list of um, how I find these and I d decided to shorten the list significantly, but um, I still have about 50. So wh what do you mean, Jason? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to try to um, answer questions as we go. And I'm not even going to go like, I don't anticipate this being more than 15, 20 minutes. So we'll just go from here. All right. So um, um, some of you guys know I have got a small EXP team. And, and one of the things I tell them every single day is, or not every day, but frequently is, um, you got to tell everybody what you're doing. That's number one. Hey, what's up, David? You got to tell everybody what you're doing. Um, whether you're a realtor, an investor, a wholesaler, multifamily, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You always got to be telling what pe people what you're doing. You got to be networking. Um, so that one, to me, is pretty obvious, but um, not to, to some. Um, bandit signs. Everybody's, <laughs> how's it going, yo? Uh, what's up, Ronnie? So bandit signs. A lot of you do know what bandit signs is. And this is pretty much um, more used for wholesalers and investors. Uh, oh, right, right, yeah, Jason. So, uh, bandit signs. Um, I, I assume everybody here knows what bandit signs are, but essentially they're just uh, uh, flimsy, correlated plastic. Somebody said angry face. Who is angry facing me? Um, anyway, so bandit signs. I do the 18 by 24 inch correlated plastic, and then um, I put them uh, everywhere in all the cities. I steer clear of cities that I know... Um, have major issues with it, but there's an innate risk with that. And some people just simply don't like it. Uh, but I'll walk that fine line. Um, JV deals. A lot of wholesalers can, uh, will get off the ground or even into their uh, later years will JV wholesale. So call bandit signs, call the postcards you get in the mail, uh, call realtors. Uh, actually, I need to add that one to my list here. But um, hairstylist. I mean, everybody gets a haircut. Your hairstylist knows a thousand other people who's selling a house, who is behind on payments, who's getting divorced, who's going through bankruptcy, who's behind on uh, credit cards, you know, high credit card debts. Um, see if they won't tell you who they are. If not, have them put your name in, in their ear and uh, they can reach out to you. Um, auto repos. Um, typically, they can't afford the car. They can't afford their house. Um, even if they're a, a renter, um, get a hold of them and see if they can't, if you can't get a hold of their landlord, maybe the landlord, landlord, landlord is, um, a new time, first time landlord, and they don't want to be a landlord anymore because tenants could be a pain in the rear. Um, and then some more pricey things, TV, radio ads. Um, I've done radio ads with another company I had in Arizona. It could get pretty pricey. Um, uh, tracking KPI can be somewhat of a task, but uh, you could do um, tracking phone numbers, phone numbers and such. Bill billboards, really pricey. I know a few guys that have done it um, with um, decent results. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that one. Uh, just basic advertising. Uh, pens, apparel, card magnets, wraps, business cards, um, everything. Uh, I mean, obviously... Uh, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the HUD homes. Uh, you can go to the HUD home store. I believe HUD home store, you have to have a uh, uh, NAR ID, uh, but I'm not 100% sure I can research into that one. I, I have, uh, I am logged into that store, but I forget how I did it. Uh, I don't utilize that one too much. Um, bird dogs. Um, recruit people to come in or, or uh, do the driving for dollars for you, um, do a marketing campaign with them. Um, 
they can and utilize their their network as leverage as well. Um, they may not have been thinking about um, other people that were in distressed situations, uh, a good friend, uh, or they don't even know they're in distressed situations. Uh, but if your bird dog tells people what they're doing, like my first item, um, it may spark those conversations. But essentially, most bird dogs will do um, a good deal of your legwork. Um, and if you build a good enough relationship, you'll be their main point of contact. Um, social media. Um, uh, similar to my first one there is obviously you guys are all in here because you saw me on social media. Um, uh, I'm very active on there. I try to do primarily business uh, for this reason right here is uh, branding and awareness. Um, uh, I'd say about once a week, somebody's reaching out to me that uh, isn't in real estate at all. And Happy New Year, Paul. I hope everything's going out. You go out to India soon, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, social media. Uh, and it's it's frequently, hey, um, my parents just passed. Uh, we're filing probate after you know, uh, or, uh, can you a uh, hut home store. Um, Ray, honestly, I haven't used that one. I am logged in. And you have access to make bids on this on the site, um, but PM me afterwards, and I'll show you what the platform looks like. Because I'm fairly positive you do have to have um, a brokerage NARID to access the platform. Um, Facebook ads. Uh, I haven't mastered this yet, and honestly, I haven't had great success. But a good friend of mine, uh, R.J. Bates. Um, has a platform that teaches this um, and I'm running through in New York now. Awesome, Paul. All right, Ray, I'll show you later. Um, and if we uh, get some questions at the end, maybe I'll get some a quick second. I'll run through my uh, my files over here. Um, Facebook, okay, Facebook ads. Um, it's Facebook ads can be vast or very targeted. Um, and what I mean by that is Facebook has probably 200 different search criteria. You can go in there and you can you can dial into uh, what type of animal they have, what type of credit cards, if it's an Amex versus a Visa, MasterCard, what their limits typically are. Um, if they're interested in real estate, um, you can find lenders this way. Um, you can see if they have recently rented a house, uh, left or moved uh, a million different things and I have a uh, it, it's probably a little data but I do have a PDF file that shows all of their uh, key demographic points and I can I can probably put that somewhere probably in a post um, Craigslist another obvious one um, uh, but not in so much in you not so obvious that you would think going on there and looking for people that sit, are obviously selling their house. You can go in there and find people that have multiple postings about selling cars, selling everything they own. You can search keywords like divorce, bankruptcy, back taxes, need to sell fast, moving, uh, job relocation. Um, find people that are selling their wedding rings. They just got a divorce. They might have a house to sell. Um same thing with Facebook groups, all the same keywords, divorce, bankruptcy, all that stuff. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of it here recently, but uh, networking, um, that's what I did primarily my first year is probably once a week I was going to networking events. Um, oh man, this whole time I haven't been recording. That sucks. Uh, so uh, RIA meetings. Uh, getting asked to do public speaking events, uh, podcast meetups, all of that stuff. Um, you can mass blanket mail neighborhoods and I do this for neighborhoods that I like a lot. Um, there's probably about four of them that I'll send every single house in there a postcard. Uh, and for me, obviously I'm doing that for investment purposes, but realtors can do that as well. Um, there's several ways you can do it. If you are a realtor, you have access to a realist where you can download uh, about 7,500 um, uh, files a month. You could use REI Source um, or you can use the platform EDDM and that's Every Door Direct Mail. Um, sorry, I had to mute somebody there, it was being too loud. Uh, da -da -da, mass Blanket, Driving for Dollars. 
Um, in the investment world, it's a pretty common phrase. Realtor, maybe not so much, but it could be used in both platforms. And essentially what that is is um, pick a neighborhood and a mark and drive around and look for motivation. So that could be anything from bad roof, green pool, missing fences, um, AC window units. You can see if uh, there's uh, cars that have been sitting a while or sitting so long that the city has tagged them. I was driving in the neighborhood the other day and there was three cars on the street. They're all tagged by the city. Um, so they're gonna be forced to move those not running cars and um, it could mean, mean a multitude of things, but it could be a motivating factor. Um, so the more obvious one is overgrown, overgrown landscaping, uncut lawns, untrimmed bushes, um, a bunch of uh, uh, of newspapers, um, carpet cleaners. Um, I own a carpet cleaning company for four years, and I can tell you that 90% of the people I cleaned for were move outs, whether that was tenants um, somebody selling their house, somebody getting ready to call the realtor, somebody that has already called the realtor. Um, and, and oftentimes, if I was cleaning after a renter, the landlord was paying for it and they were pissed. So, um, uh, yeah, carpet cleaners are probably a pretty good contact for you. Um, so I'm about through 18 of these. What do you guys think about me going through just like all 40-something of them now instead of doing two videos? Uh, yeah, Joshua, uh, garage sales, that's on my list here. Actually, that's my second uh, one now. Door-to-door uh, -door salesman. Um, if I'm driving around, driving for dollars, driving through random neighborhoods, doing whatever, and I see somebody walking around with a clipboard, hey, hey Maurice, I stop him. Um, and I'll talk to him. I'll tell him who I am, what I'm doing, give him a business card, and um, tell him to call me. Um, cause they, they're walking every single neighborhood with every single, they're knocking every single door and, uh, I don't door knock. I'm scared shitless, honestly, to even bother doing that. So if you got somebody that's door knocking, um, you can probably eventually turn them even to a bird dog and be a door knocker for you. Just an idea. Um, but door to the salesman, satellite, solar, more, right. Yeah, the LDS. Uh, just track them around with a little badge. You, you'll find them. Um, uh, satellite Solar Energy and Mailman uh, newspaper. So Mailman I had separately before because I'll stop every single Mailman I see and give them, and give them a, a business card. And if uh, it's easy for them. Uh, a lot of them won't actually do it. But if you give that, them that incentive of, hey, I'll give you 1500 bucks. As an investor, that's good. As a realtor not so great because you can't do that technically but 1500 bucks 2000 bucks 500 bucks whatever you want to do to say hey it's super easy here's my number here's my email text me a picture of the house and the address i'll put you my crm and if i can buy this property um then i'll pay you at that point and it's i mean it's basically free money for them so it's a no-brainer um but you'll have to go through 50 of them before one of them actually sends you a deal um garage sales um, I stop at almost every single garage sale and I see if they're selling the house. Um, uh, estate sales, same thing. If I see an estate sale sign, I'm going to find that house. I'm going to go figure out if it's being held by an auctioneer or the kids of the deceased um, and see if they're selling. And actually, that reminds me, I should have brought a water in here. Um... What was the other one? Uh, I guess I didn't put that down. Uh, but in regards to the state sales, auctioneers, real estate auctioneers. Um, uh, let me mute somebody. Uh, yeah, real estate au auctioneers. Um, many of them I'll stop by and it's being held by a professional company. And uh, I'll just give my card, same deal. The next one, please give me a call and do my best to build the re those relationships. Uh, hey, Shannon. Long time no talk. Thanks for some of that Garland deal earlier this year. Um, lenders. Okay, yeah. Uh, say sales. Lenders. Uh, retail mortgage, hard money, private money, um, anything of that fashion. Uh, 
big deal. I can still hear you. Sorry. Um, uh, the lenders, they know who is, who's selling, who needs to sell, who's um, moving out of the rental property. Again, contact the landlord. Um, or they're going to the, the mortgage company to try to do a refinance because they can't afford their payments or whatever. Uh, hard money, if they have to bring or they take back a property, uh, private money, the same thing. Um, REO, uh, real estate owned properties, banks. So um, uh, getting good with the uh, asset managers there and build those relationships, let them know that you're, you're the real deal and they'll give you access to those lists. Um, just had one reach out to me here recently. It's pretty awesome. Um, not, I'm not sure we'll do anything with it, but they got me in touch with one of their borrowers who has an, a portfolio of uh, 14 properties up north. So we're, we're looking at that one right now. Um, accountants, financial advisors. Um, uh, again, another one that I've utilized well is uh, for many reasons, uh, they're retiring, they're cashing out the 401, the IRA, um, they're uh, selling an inherited property for whatever reason. These financial advisors don't or can't advise on real estate because their their business is um, uh, managing money in the market, and so they'll advise them to sell property to put the money with them. So um, I've actually viewed and offered on several of those this year. However, they didn't pan out in my favor, but the relationship's there and it's going well. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate it, man. Uh, attorneys, probate, divorce, real estate, family law. Um, again, uh, everybody knows a probate says so somebody's going to pass away. They got to do the probating and affidavits through an attorney. Um, it's got, there's typically a court, uh, hearing and blah, blah, blah. So get in touch with them. I, it, this one honestly is pretty hard to do. Me personally, uh, cold calling isn't my forte and, uh, it's been, I called dozens in, in earlier in my career and I didn't have much luck with it, but I can probably re redo that. Divorce attorneys, real estate, family law. Um, the divorce one works. That's, uh, I touch on that one here a little bit later as well. Uh, recorded liens, um, like a mechanics liens. Um, one thing I noticed uh, pretty heavily when I was finding uh, distressed properties Sorry, had more back noise from somebody. Um, where was I? I recorded liens. Oh, pool builders, uh, back child support, um, all those things. Yes, bankruptcy, Ray. Um, yeah, so I, I'm getting the bankruptcy in the uh, public records. Um, nursing homes, retirement homes, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and approach that at your discretion, um, and however you would like. Uh, for obvious res obvious reasons, I mean, maybe obviously not approach the. Uh, oh yeah, bankruptcy attorneys, nice one. Yep, yep, I'll do that. Um, bankruptcy. We got a got a, another person, another person over here. Um, uh, da, 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 relocation specialists. So these oftentimes are brokered companies, and they're simply connecting. Realtor A and Realtor B in different states, but if you can build those relationships, you can get the. Uh, oftentimes, relocation specialists are used in situations where there's a job relocation; they have to sell fast. Um, so you could utilize that um, as a realtor and, and investor. Yep, yep, yep. Um, many um, of my foreclosures have been also been in bankruptcy so waiting for the uh judge to approve certain things can be a pain but uh, an excellent source because multiple levels of motivation uh make for better deals uh title companies they see all the deals all day every day they know which ones go through they know which ones are having issues the buyer falls out the sellers fall out they know everything um find a preferred title company and stick with them um, I don't like switching up people that I trust and, uh, title companies is one of those. Um, it doesn't matter what they charge me. Uh, right, 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 Ricky. So nursing homes do hold the assets that the structures in real estate themselves where the, the tenants are housed, but, um, uh, their previous, um, homestead would need to be sold almost always. 
Uh, public records, just a big one. Um, this is where I mail almost all of my list from, and there's a multiple different avenues on how to obtain them. I could probably do a separate video on that, but and, and a lot of these are obvious and some maybe not so obvious, and, and some are easy to get, some are not easy to get, but uh, tax delinquent, water shutoffs, divorce, uh, notice of sale, um, substitute trustee, affidavit of airships, bankruptcies, probate, evictions, code violations, uh, foreclosures. Um, these are all public records. Um, uh, where I missed one? Evictions. Actually, I didn't even write that one in there. Evictions. Um, and evictions are nice because uh, most landlords don't want to deal with that. So uh, they'd be willing to sell. And, um, so a lot of these can be obtained online. Um, there's an open records request form on almost all city sites. Um, but some cities are a pain, some are not, some are, you know, some are easy, some require you to fax, some require you to email, um, print and sign, pay for. So there's a lot of different ways to obtain these records. Some require you to go in. Um, all right, move on. Uh, for sale by owner, obviously. Um, as a realtor, you should always be calling those. Yes, so public records will be tax delinquent, water shutoffs, divorce, notice of sales, Medical sales. Oh, sorry. I'm a fast talker. Mostly because I hate doing videos. I'm super nervous. Uh, water shutoffs. Divorce. Notice of sale. Oh, I put divorce twice. It's highly motivating. I don't get anybody to sell. Um, yeah, got several houses last year for off a of divorce. And actually, I didn't even pull the ones that I got off of public records. Um, they knew me as an investor and contacted me. So that's pretty cool. Probate, evictions, uh, code violations, foreclosures, substitute of trustee, affidavit of airships, bankruptcy, and evictions. Um, did you get it? Um, obviously, I have this in PDF, so I can send this to everybody that's watching. Uh, for sale by owner. Um, uh, again, for realtors, it's obvious. It's one of the things taught in the beginning. Um, you can pull those up on... Uh, uh, or the Trulia, Tr yeah, Trulia, Zillow, um, Craigslist, Facebook, um, signs in the yard, you know, all those things. Um, give them a call, see if uh, you can represent them. You know, obviously talking about the pros and cons of a realtor versus doing your own. Um, and as an investor, uh, going to make an offer, make it clean, simple, and uh, easy for them. Uh, with no open houses, uh, no realtor fees, blah, blah, blah. You know the, the deal. Mobile home parks. Um, talk to the owners and managers um, about move outs. Oftentimes, or actually most times, the um, previous tenants or homeowners can't afford to move their house. And they'll leave them behind for the mobile home park to take back. Um, uh, so if you... Build that relationship, you can uh, be the one to buy those mobile homes, rent them out, take them out, and put them in your own park, put them on a piece of land, whatever. Um, funeral homes, again, I would approach that one at your own discretion. I haven't done it. Um, it's just something I thought about, but I assume if you can get a hold of the uh, owner or manager, you could uh, be ahead of the probate filings. So it could be cool. I don't do it because um, I'm a chicken. Anyways, public real estate auctions. Oh, I kind of talked about that already after my estate sales. Um, talk to the auctioneer, talk to the owner of the company, and uh, see if you can't be their numero uno phone call. Uh, builders. It's probably not a good source right now, but uh, one thing we all saw in the downfall 2006, 7, 8, 9 is builders were going bankrupt. So they were selling these properties at 60, 50, 40, 30% um, of their value. I remember in Arizona when this was going on, I had just bought a brand new house uh, for 125,000 and it wasn't a year later that um, the houses up the street were being sold for 40, 50, $60,000 brand spanking new and now they're worth over 200. Um, I wish I was uh, a little more uh, real estate smart back then has been my early twenties. 
um, and I would have been able to get on that one. Um, large companies, um, and what I mean by that is uh, we all saw uh, was a State Farm, uh, Toyota, uh, Google, or not Google, uh, Amazon, all these companies that are moving to Texas or wherever you are, all these companies uh, have a significant amount of job relocations, uh, which means there's going to be housing problems. Um, uh, so you should be able to jump in there and snag some listings and or purchases. <clears throat> um, Section 8 landlords, um, and really any landlords in general, um, they not everyone has what it is or what it takes to be a landlord uh, or just simply uh, loses interest, and especially Section 8, uh, because there is a significant amount of uh, required permitting and approvals from the city and can be a real pain and uh, how, However, I don't own any section 8 properties. I've heard they can be a pain with um, the tenants that know how to play the system um, and uh, I hear it taking take several months for payment to come through sometimes if problems arise um, Again uh, touching on it a second ago accidental tired Landlords um, could be their first house, could be their fifth house. Um, they're either tired of evictions, maintenance, whatever, and uh, they want to sell. This is probably one of the most mailed lists of all time is uh, non owner occupancy in and out of states. Um, retiring landlord, oh, yeah, okay, so yeah, well, I guess I could touch on this one. Retired landlords, same thing, tired landlords, but they're retiring. Um, which goes back to my um, REO topic where uh, this guy's ready to get out of the game. So he's got 15 houses he wants to sell, um, all at a pretty significant discount from what I can tell so far. Um, real estate agents that concentrate on rentals um, for a multitude of reasons. Um, either somebody can't afford their house and they're downsizing and they got to go into rentals. Um and if you've been in real estate long enough, every single foreclosure you buy, well, they can't go buy another house. They have to go rent. So if you can get in with these rental agents, they can uh, get you in contact with those distressed sellers. Property managers, um, there's a million of them. Uh, they all manage properties. Duh. So the landlords, back to that, it's a hot lead source, obviously. So um bought a house last year landlord just um wanted to put his money somewhere else so he sold the house at a discount and we flipped it um expired mls listings um they could be expired for a million different reasons um i targeted these back in my realtor days and you can mail them or cold call them and figure out why it didn't sell see if you can fix that pain point uh, oftentimes it didn't sell because um, the sellers are unrealistic, uh, which is pretty common, or they hated their realtor and you can step on in. Uh, same thing with canceled or withdrawn. Uh, thanks, Justin. Uh, uh, canceled or withdrawn listing, same deal. It's either the seller was uh, unrealistic or the asking price. Um, uh, they didn't like the realtor. It could have been they um, the right motivation wasn't there at the time, and so they weren't allowing showings. I've listed those houses before where I couldn't get a buyer in the dang house, and I was like, hey, I'm out. I'm canceling this listing. Um, somebody else could have very easily swept in and gotten that. Um, wrapping up on the last four. Now I'll take some questions. Uh, insurance brokers. Um a multitude of different reasons. Um, when we flip houses, we're getting vacant and builder's risk policies. There's rental policies, homeowner policies, um, blanket policies. Anyhow, anyhow, these insurance brokers, they know what's going on in everybody's life. They could uh, hear of situations or know situations where they need to sell. Um, military relations. I don't know how to word that one. Um, but either way, our uh, men and women that are serving us uh, need places to live and they're not, it's not always on base. Sometimes they're off base and so they're out there renting and buying properties in and around the base. And some of them are uh, U.S. government owned properties, but sometimes 
How do I find expired listings? Uh, you need MLS access, Joey. Um, I would just uh, find a realtor in your local market and see if you couldn't um, get access or have them email them to you. And then from there, you do all the legwork. Um, if, I don't know if you're a realtor or an investor, but let's say you're not a realtor and you're an investor, but uh, you want access to that list, call up a realtor, have you send a list, and um, in return, you can give the realtor the listing on the back end and or uh, have them list it uh, as an as is or something. But there's multiple different ways. Got it. Uh, insurance broker, military, uh, list pendants. Um, essentially, it's just a pending lawsuit as it relates to real estate, and it could be a multitude of different reasons. Uh, oftentimes, I'll see this with HOAs. Um, some, uh, how do I explain this? So, let's say, yeah, I saw this one time in, in Northern Arizona. A, a An apartment complex turned condo complex had an HOA that was managing the complex, but all of the units were condos. Um, but then there was a lawsuit with the HOA with, uh, I don't know, somebody else. Anyways, because of the lawsuit, they couldn't sell to conventional buyers, uh, which forced anybody that wanted to sell within that condo complex to take only cash offers. So it was a investor hotspot. Um, senior exemptions. Oh, you know what? I'm going to type down another one I just thought of. I'm gonna tell you about one guy's secret that uh, hasn't panned off for me yet, but I think it's freaking genius. Uh, so senior exemption, um, again, obviously they're getting old. Uh, they may or may not want to move into their kid's house, assisted living. Um, they may want to go into a rental situation or an apartment where they don't have to maintain the yard. Um, a lot of times when I do my drive for dollars and I pull up these properties afterwards, uh, most of them are senior exempt. Uh, they just can't maintain their property anymore, uh, which is ripe for the pickings. Um, and a cool one um, I hadn't shared before, but eh, might as well. Um, I'll pull up Google Maps and find all the green pools in the neighborhood and start mailing them. And uh, you probably use this as, um, as a pool guy. Same thing with roofs. You drive around for roofs. Um, so I have a list of, you know, it really sucks that I didn't record the Zoom call. That's why I did Zoom. That is unfortunate. Um, eh, actually, since we're on Facebook Live, I can't show you. But anyways, uh, you guys have any questions? I think that's roughly about 45 of them. Uh, I spent the day uh, shrinking this list down from 70-ish uh, because a lot of them are kind of sort of repeats man that was 30 minutes cool no questions guess I did a good job explaining it not a I oh, you know I just realized that the mic on the phone is probably not as good as what I have on zoom call sorry Thanks, Ray. Uh, child support liens from John on Zoom. Yes, sir. Um, those are public records. They are judgments. Um, um, or could be filed state liens, actually. My family is waiting on me to get a dinner and they kill me if I don't go. Yep, I hear you. I uh, should not have scheduled this on New Year's uh, Eve. My bad, but I already made an event so I couldn't back out again. Um, no problem, no problem. Okay. Well, I'm gonna exit the Zoom call that I didn't record. Uh, so dumb. And I use Zoom to record all my podcasts and I didn't hit record like a dummy. Um, so mailing these lists, um, I will, uh, so they got to put in an Excel form. 
um, and convert it to CSV file for what I do. So I'll go into what click to mail and mail them postcards, just four and a half by six and a quarter postcards. And um, uh, um, so uh, click to mail postcards. So yeah, I'll mail, mail them postcards. I've I've tried like dozens of different scripts and writing on there, um, different pictures, crayons, family pictures. I mean, it all works. Um, I haven't found one that's like, you know, like numero uno, the best one. Um, but I do screen castomatic sweet, Jason. Appreciate it, dude. Um, I know that I can save this video once I've finished it, I can download it, which is all right. I was hoping to do Zoom though. Oh, I have questions over here. What system do you like to use for leverage your time to keep from being snowed in with busy work? Um, it's any hard written letters. Do you use a font service to type these out? Um, so Justin is asking me, um, If I use handwritten letters or I or font sizes and or computer handwriting, so Justin, I used to um, handwrite all letters in the beginning, but I was doing like 40, 50 a day, and I would spend hours doing it, and then um, I started the font, the handwritten font. So if there's a program where you can um, upload your font into Word document and print it that way. Eh, it didn't look genuine. Uh, I would still sign every single one by hand and I'll handwrite the letters and, or not the letters, but the envelopes. And then I would have my kids fold and stuff and stamp and tape. And it ended up being a giant nightmare. I actually still do that um, for, uh, here, I'm not going to show you the address, but I still handwrite some of them uh, for ones that I feel are highly motivated. Um, let's say, like for that one right there. Oh, I just showed you the name. What a dummy. Um, so uh, that one there had multiple city violations on the door, taped to the door. So um, I cold call him earlier. Uh, he basically told me to kick rocks, but I'm going to mail him, mail him, mail him until he calls me and says he's going to sue me. Um, but there is handwriting services out there or handwritten letter services. Um, I think Yellow Letter Headquarters does that. What CRM do you use? I use Beast Mode. It's a Podio extension uh, with like 13 different apps. It's pretty sweet. Um, what system do you use to leverage your time? So in, in regards to leveraging my time, I hired VAs and I trained them to do all of my direct mails, um, skip tracing, cold calling, bring us voicemails, texting. Uh... Yes, what is the C the CRM I use is beast mode. Uh, what is, is there a way to pull the emails for the sellers? Uh, technically, yes. Um, however, okay, so I should repeat that. So Joey on Facebook Live is asking, what is or is there a way to pull the emails for the sellers? Technically, yes. Oh, okay, I can step back into that. Let me answer Joe's real quick. So there is a way to find seller's emails. You got to skip trace them. Um, but the uh, government has some pretty stiff regulations on emailing right now um, and actually significant fines, so I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, they are not local VAs. They are my teams out of the Philippines. So the, um, I'll, I'll touch on that. So my, Fili my Filipino VAs, I've got five to six of them working on any one day. Um, and the results, uh, essentially it's freed up my whole day. Um, uh, normally when I would get up, I'd pull my list um, from my list service I use is Propelio. So I'd pull my Propelio list, I'd download the CSV file, I'd go into click to mail, import, mail merge, you know, I'd do the whole deal and I'd send them out and ultimately that doesn't take very long, but um, there's some counties I don't provide, so now I've trained the VAs to go in there to do my mailers. They will skip trace. They will send out ringless voicemails, mass texting. Um, uh, where, where else was I going? So I trained them to... Here, I'll just pull up one of my 
back on my emails real quick. So I get a daily update from my e from my girls. Do, do, do. So four VAs work for me all day full time, and then two to three work on my podcasting. Um. Uh, oh, so they do all of my driving for dollars uh, mail list. So. Uh, hold on, Ritesh. So, uh, my driving for dollars. So, I'll uh, write down all the driving for dollars. Me and Nash will drive around. We'll write the list. Uh, we'll type them into an Excel sheet. And there's apps for this, um, I know, but I'm a cheapskate, kind of. Uh, I guess you call it frugal. So, driving for dollars, uh, put it on an Excel sheet. And then I send it over to the VAs. And they go into the county records and find me all the mailing addresses and then they'll bring that list into click to mail and mail it out for me. And then we set up a six month mail campaign. Um, again, we use propeller to pull them out. Uh, and my leads are uh, scrubbed a little bit. Uh, cost. Um, my VAs are four bucks an hour for the main four girls. And then the other two um, range depending on task, but my, my VAs that do my podcasting, they'll edit my audio and video uh, a little more expensive. And then my SEO VAs are nine bucks an hour. Um, again, we're mailing probates, affidavits, substitute for, uh, foreclosures, letters, and postcards. They do the ringless voicemail, uh, the texting, and then a ton of uh, SEO optimization. Uh, mass texting, we use Livecom. Um, yeah, so Livecom, I like it. It works pretty easy. Um, our Ringo's voicemail, we're using Sly Broadcast. Um, do you still like Persona being in Austin? Not sure how much of an animal's footprint they have here. Uh, so Justin asked again, as a realtor, you like to provide your services being in Austin? Not sure how much of an MLS footprint they have. Well, so the way, uh, Propelio works is their, um, their MLS access is direct through uh, IDX integration through a broker. So it's actual comps. And in Texas, I think it's the only actual outside of MLS real comps. Um, uh, because Zillow and Trulia, being, Texas being a non-disclosure state, you can't, uh, that none of that's public knowledge, the sales price. So uh, a week, um, I'll see what what they're billing me. I actually haven't paid attention in a while. Um, so yeah, Propelio in Austin is probably a good idea because uh, they provide a list that you need. Um, so they do about 40 to 50 hours. Uh, it depends on what I have them do. I've been doing a lot of driving for dollars lately, so they do a significant amount of uh, data scrubbing right now. Um, and then they also do data list or my yeah my uh, list um, stacking. So we'll get I'll pull all of our list into uh, together and figure out which ones have multiple levels of motivation, and then those are like targeted ones. We'll cold call those ones. Um, Kim, uh, on Zoom, I'm not sure what list you are referencing. And I'm sorry, it's been like 10 minutes, 9 minutes since you asked that question, so I totally screwed that up. Okay. Andre, my man, you are a smidge late. We are all done. Um, but feel free to ask. Um, and for those that came in on here, I will make note of that and I'll send you this PDF. Um, otherwise, I won't be sharing this outside of these, this video. How do you find the VAs that know how to do this type of data organization? Did you say you train them? Yes, I train them. And so um, I found a few on Upwork. Uh, yeah, Upwork. And then you can find them on Fiverr. Fiverr I've used for like... Um, um, drafting JPEGs for business designs and stuff, but how long did you work with them? I've been with my current VAs 
about eight months, I think. Um, so yeah, I trained them. Um, um, and these ones I use now are actually referrals from a good buddy and we helped grow their, uh, their company. So they started out a few VAs working all together and now they're quite a few VAs. Uh, but yeah, I'll train them. So I will do, um, anything that you can record on, uh, either a screen share or actually technically you can do a video like this and record anything, but, uh, um, yeah, so I'll do a screen recording. So like, uh, my click to mail, I'll go in there and I will develop the PDF files for that click to mail, um, postcard or letter. And with the right proper mail merging um, files, uh, mail merging inserts, whatever, it's getting um, tongue twisted now. But um, so I'll do a screen recording. I'll show them how to go into Propelio, how to pull the list out. And for a while, we were having to convert from Excel to CSV, and then so uh, they'll import into Click to Mail and they'll send those out for me. Same deal when they're finding. Um, uh, the public records for other random cities that Propelio doesn't provide for, they are going in the county records and uh, pulling those based off of a recording that I've done. So a lot of these things you do have to know yourself to be able to, to train them. But what's cool um, is I've actually... So like for me, my time is, is pretty uh, near and dear, obviously. So... There's often times where I'll have an idea and I won't want to go figure out how to do it. And I'll just shoot the memo real quick and say, hey, this is kind of like what I want to do. Can you figure this out? And then they'll go do all the research and they'll tell me how they did it. And then we'll test it for a few days. And if it works, we'll move forward. Um, the, the trainings, Justin, on Zoom. Um, I mean, the, the, the recordings are anywhere from a couple minutes to... Um, 20, 30 minutes. But uh, aside from that, let's say I gave them a new task. I will verify that they're doing it properly for two to 10 days, depending on the task and its difficulty. And once they've mastered it, I just let them do their thing. And so now, for the most part, everything I got them doing right now, they are, um, they're left alone. I, I just get in the daily email at the, uh, at the end of the day with updates on what they did. <clears throat> Oh, hold on. Tasha, raise your hand. Oh, wow, she's sending an email. Uh, all right. No more questions. All right, I'm going to give it like 10 more seconds and then I'll bail. Nothing? Come on, man. Um, ask me anything, uh, even if it isn't in regards to motivated sellers. Um, hmm. uh, well, essentially, aside from my social media, they're bringing in all my deals, um, kind of in a, in a way. Um, the cold calling, I actually had them stop doing. And I've been cold calling personally, unfortunately, because um, I couldn't figure out why the conversion wasn't there. So we were calling anywhere between 100 and 250 people a day, and um, it just wasn't converting. So I was trying to figure out what it was, whether it was script. Um, I thought it was script or, or uh, the language barrier. Um, and uh, anyways, I just I told them to stop cold calling. I've been doing it lately. And I'll probably end up hiring it out. Uh, but essentially, since they do all my marketing, they, um, they're they all my deals. So uh, I'll probably do another video on like apps and platforms that I use. Because uh, it's quite a bit. Because everything is integrated through some sort of... Because my biggest thing right now is automating everything uh, to where I'm hands off. So the VAs did a lot of that. But they use a lot of systems... Sorry, there's some interference there. 
uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, um, there's a lot of systems that are integrated. So I haven't utilize them to go into the CRM yet and do all that stuff yet, but um, soon. Okie dokie guys, I'm out. Um, I am going to end this here. No problem Justin, have a good one.